of every day. We're just nothing more than um, aspects of that of those energies. Matter of fact, it's called electromagnetism. <laughs> okay. For example, um, you got atom. Later on, you got this word right here, in which that it tells you really where it comes from. All right. Now, you break it down even further, you find out that um, the father, you get this word right here, is Patal. Patal Ra. Patal Ra is the exact same word where the word father originates from. F A T H. And there it is right there. E R. There you go. The word father. Now, you break down even further about the word father, the word fa within your so-called uh, Holy Quran, you got Fatiha. Fatiha is what? Surah Al-Fatiha, which is, happens to be the first surah in the Holy Quran, right? Now, within there, it tells you that Al-Fatiha means the opening. <laughs> well, within ancient comedic teachings, Patah was known as the opener. <laughs> now, this can't be no damn coincidence. You know what I'm saying? So that means that they put the book because supposedly it was originally the fifth surah, and they moved it from the fifth surah to the first surah. So now, why did they move it? Well, the only one who could have moved it was the Moors who ruled Spain for 800 years. They were the one who was privileged to the actual um, information coming from the Holy Quran, because the ancient Coptic Christians who were black at the time was the one who originated it, the whole theory of Islam. The religion of Islam, 75% of the Holy Quran, comes straight out from the Bible, as well as the Apocrypha, as well as the Zoroastrian scriptures. That's, what, that's the whole book of the Quran. Once again, the Bible, which is the Old Testament and the New Testament, okay? The, Holy, the, um, um, the um, Apocrypha, which were the 18 missing books, as they say, in which that was taken out in 325 AD by Constantine, who was the emperor of... Constantinople as it was at that time because he moved it from Rome to Turkey in which that is now called Istanbul. All right? Um, now, go even further, we find out that the opening, you, you start out with this, you know, Bismillah, El Rahman, El Rahim. Alhamdulillah, Rabbi Alameen. Now, you go into the singing of it, you find out what really happens in the process. That there's seven verses of El Fatiha. Those seven verses ends with this. Ayn. Ayn is found within the Arabic script as well as also the Hebrew script. And you find out that um, Ayn, um, is the, its symbol is an eye. One eye. Well, you go to Matthew's, the 22nd, the 6th chapter, 22nd verse. And it reads, the light of the body is the eye. If therefore thy eye be single, the whole body shall be full of light. That's deep. So that means that once you realize about the signs of the eye sound, actually what you are bringing into you through the awakening and the opening of that particular eye, which we call it what, the third eye. Actually it's the first eye. <laughs> okay? Um, you know, we also call it the eye of Buddha, the eye of Shiva, the eye of Jesus, because that's who just mentioned this. He, that's where I read from. Was supposedly that's supposedly was Jesus who read who said that. Um, you know, so um, also the eye of Brahma. So the, this eye has many different names throughout. You know, what I'm saying throughout the ancient world. So when you say Amen has the exact same tone at the end, that ain sound. So that ain sound, those seven verses awakens what? power within you, the latent power of the chakras, because there's seven major chakras within your system. Matter of fact, that's what the whole book of Revelation speaks on, is the awakening power of the seven chakras. 
it ain't, don't, don't think that this is just a prophetic book and you think, you know, some creature getting ready to come up out the water, you know what I'm saying, attack New York, you know what I'm saying, Arr! you know what I'm saying, you know, got ten horns, you know what I'm saying, seven crowns on his head, you know, get ready to munch your ass up. It ain't going to happen. You know, that's not the science in which that is being explained here. The science in which that is being explained here is the awakening of the chakra system and the problems in which that people have because of the karma in which that they have brought upon themselves and how the Kundalini energy has to break through those threads of karmic lessons so that you can raise yourself up to become the Christ. That's the, that's the whole science in this. So the whole thing is about this opening is that from out of the so-called ancient Coptic Christians, they already remember the ancient Coptic Christians was established 300 years before the Roman Catholic Church. 300 years before the Roman Catholic so where did they get the information from? Well, they got the information right off the ancient walls of Kemet also. Abydos. <laughs> Seti I. The temple of Het Heteru. The temple of the Hall of Maat. You know what I'm saying? From the books of the Book of Coming Forth by Day and Night, which is called the Opening of the Mouth Ceremony. <laughs> the Opening of the Mouth Ceremony. Well, hold up. Where is this mouth located at? Because this mouth is conjuncted with this eye. Well, guess what? When the Kundalini energy comes up the back of your spine, the first place it hit is called the medulla amagata, which is right here at the back of your head, which is called the mouth of God. Did you hear me? It's called the mouth of God. Matter of fact, you go to your scriptures, it tells you that Jesus went up onto Mount Calvary. And as he was up there on Mount Calvary, it became known as the place of the skulls, Golgotha, <laughs> Aramaic, Gold. Goth, the Golgotha means the place of the skull. Place of the skull. So it's telling you where Christ was crucified at. The reason why is that when the energy comes up the base of your spine, it crucifies your lower nature. It stops you from acting beastly. It stops you from having those so-called emotions in which that we often get wrapped up in. Jealousy, envy, hatred, lust, greed. It kills all that shit. <laughs> and you begin to, that energy begins to bounce off from the medulla oblongata to the pituitary gland, hypothalamus gland, and then strikes the pineal gland into awakening, illuminating the whole cavern in which that is called the cave of Brahma, in which that they tell you within the Apocrypha that Jesus was born in a cave. Not in where? Not in the manger, but that is the manger inside of your brain, which is called the third ventricle, in which that is that cavern is illuminated with white light. And matter of fact, when you go into deep meditation, you'll see the cavern illuminate within your mind. You'll see the opening and awakening of this eye as it produced this white light. Let me go a little bit deeper here. Because they ain't getting no damn response yet, so, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I ain't getting no response yet. We're going to have to go a little bit deeper here. All right, let me get back up to the mother and father. Since we done went through the father aspect, let's get on to the mama. Now, what, what you got? I got a picture of the, uh, of the school of the brain. Oh, no, I ain't going to show that one yet. I'm going to get to that one in a second. <laughs> but right here, it says, Atum came and emerged from out of where? Noon. The other aspect of noon is new. All right? Noon is the masculine form. Noon is the feminine form. And as you know, noon is actually, within our language, will be pronounced as nun. You know what I'm saying? And you know about the signs of the nun. The nuns walk around with what? Cloaked in black. Well, the reason why they are cloaked in black because they are replica they trying to replicate the signs of melanin and the ability in order to absorb the energies of the cosmos and of the solar rays. So the thing is, is that noon represents the primordial substance of space called black matter or dark matter. All right? So where was this darkness created in? Even this darkness itself was created. The all is mind and everything in the universe is mental. So that means that the mind produced the darkness and the darkness produced reflected the light and which brought it into manifestation. So the darkness is what produced the light, but the darkness itself was also created from the mind of the all. 
The mind is, produce, is the producer of everything in existence. There's nothing in which that you can't think of that hasn't been produced. This table itself was once a thought within the mind of the person in which that got the material.